Hi everyone, welcome. We're going to talk about debits and credits and I'm going to do so using every accountant's and financial financial professional's favorite tool, Excel. So you see on the screen I have a spreadsheet up. It's called debits and credits. So let's begin our brief look at debits and credits. Now at this point you're already familiar with what a balance sheet is. You know that assets are items that have value to a enterprise. Okay, I think we could be more technical and say assets are probable benefits that expect to accrue to the business. They have future economic value to us. Okay, and then if I slide over here, we know that the balance sheet also has liabilities, which are obligations or the value of things we owe to others outside the enterprise. And a balance sheet has equity. Now, it might be stockholders' equity in the case of a corporation, or it might be owners' equity in the case of a sole proprietorship or, uh, or a partnership. It might even be called partners' equity. But the point is, we have three items, and it's always in balance. The value of our assets is always equal to our liabilities in equity. Well, with that in mind, we're going to introduce the concept of debits and credits. Okay, now, long ago when accounting was started, they used the term debit to mean left and credit to mean right. So we'll put assets on the left side and we'll call these debits. We'll put liabilities and equity on the right side, just how it appears on the right side of a balance sheet, and we'll call these credits. Now, let me center that. And uh, we can continue to talk about this a little bit. Now, if we're on the left side of the equation, right, and here's our equation, assets equals liabilities plus equity. That's the accounting equation, and it very much mirrors what the balance sheet looks like. Well, we know if we're on the left side, debits will give us an increase. So I'm going to put a little plus sign here. If we're on the right side and we increase liabilities or equity, we'll use the plus side as well. Now what this means is that any asset account that has a debit applied to it increases that account's balance. That also means any liability or equity account that has a credit added to its balance, it will increase those accounts balance. Now, I'm going to write credits and put a minus sign over here and debits as a minus sign over here. I'll center that. I'll move my mouse out of the way. Okay, what does this mean? Well, this is the rules of debits and credits. And the rules of debits and credits tell us that on the left side of the equation, meaning for asset accounts, if we debit them, they increase the account balance. If we credit them, it decreases the account balance. So as an example, if we had cash, which is an asset account, right? Cash has future economic value and we increase or we debit the cash account it increases it if we credit the cash account it would decrease the cash balance and we'll go through some examples in a minute here let me move over to the right side well one liability account we have is accounts payable accounts payable is the count that we use to show what we owe our vendors or our suppliers and I use the term vendors and su suppliers interchangeably but the accounts payable is the account that shows how much we owe them for go goods or services that they've already provided to us 
in exchange for our promise to pay for those goods or services in the future. So we're looking at what's the balance that we owe to our suppliers or our vendors. And the balance will appear as a credit balance because it's a liability. If we increase the balance that we owe to them, that means we must have, we must have credited the account because credits increase liabilities. Credits also increase the equity account. And again, the opposite is that a debit will decrease the equity account. All right, let's go through some brief examples. Okay, but before we go through some brief examples, let's go through the rules of debits and credits once again. And I've, I've put this blue triangle on the screen so that we can focus on where we're at. We're going to start with the accounting equation. I'll slide this down a little bit. And we know that the accounting equation says assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. And of course, owner's equity could also say stockholder's equity. But you also know by now that owner's equity is broken down into components. So we can expand owner's equity to say it consists of new contributions, less distributions, plus revenues, minus expenses. The sum of those will give us either owner's equity or stockholder's equity. So in other words, the expanded accounting equation is given in row four, and it says assets equal liabilities plus new contributions from, of owner's equity minus distributions to owners plus revenues minus expenses. Okay, now at this point you know that revenues are the principal cash flows and other positive uh, uh, items that accrue to the firm as a result of what it does and you know that expenses are the necessary outflows or other things we must give up in the hopes of generating revenue. And of course the goal is that the revenues exceed the expenses and that's how we have income because revenues minus expenses is income. Okay, well that's the accounting equation. So let's look at rules and debits for the accounting equation. Debit means left and credit means right. That's just one of those items you have to memorize or at least keep it on a note sheet so that you have it in front of you. As you work more and more with accounting it will become obvious. Okay. Assets increase with debits and they decrease with credits. Another way of saying that is the normal balance is the one that always has the increase side. So the normal balance for assets would be debits, right? Assets have a normal debit balance. Now liabilities, they increase with credits and they decrease with debits. That means their normal balance is a credit balance. Equity behaves just like a liability and we would expect it to because it's on the same sign of side of the accounting equation the equity increases with the credits and it decreases with a debit okay so now we can break the equity down into its component pieces we'll start with the first one revenues now revenues will increase owner's equity. It's got a positive right here, right? Plus revenues. By the way, when I say new contributions, if you remember from algebra, that positive goes right in front there. So we've got increases of new contributions, minus distributions, plus revenues, minus expenses. So it would make sense that revenues will increase with a credit and decrease with a debit. Now, if you can't logically understand it at this point, that's okay. Just memorize the rules or keep a cheat sheet available. You might want to t pause this presentation and take a screen, screen print of it so that you have that in front of you. Now, expenses go the opposite way. Expenses will increase with debits, but they'll decrease with a credit. 
okay? The third one is the distributions. Now, in a sole proprietorship or a partnership, we might call the distribution a withdrawal. In a corporation, the distribution is typically called a dividend. It's typically paid in cash, but not always. If we have a distribution, it behaves like an expense. An increase in the distribution shows up as a debit to the distribution account. A decrease shows up as a credit. And we might use an account called dividend distributions. And then finally, we have new contributions. This is where owners put more money into the business, or in the case of a corporation, we have initial public offering, or, or uh, it's the point where a private company um, uh, receives money from whoever the shareholders are. So what we see here is an increase with credits and a decrease with debits. So again, the two positive items, contributions and revenues, all increase with credits. The two negatives, there's a minus sign in front of them, increase with debits. They behave more like items on the left side of the accounting equation than the right. Okay, that's the rules of debits and credits. Now, at this point, you may want to pause the presentation and uh, take a screen capture of that or pause it and write it down. It actually may be more to your benefit if you take the time to write all this down because uh, I think sometimes writing helps internalize the information better than just using a print screen uh, uh, tool. Okay, now it's time to work with some basic transactions. And what I've done is I've put four accounts in front of us. Now I'm using T accounts. You can see it looks like a T. And a T account symbolizes the accounting equation. Debits are on the left side. Credits are on the right side. And we're going to record transactions using money values. We're going to make sure that every transaction balances because Every transaction must balance. Uh, balancing a transaction means that the total debits equal the total credits. So let's assume I start an accounting firm. And, um, oh, let's say I do taxes. And for my first client, um, maybe the tax return was $1,200. And I tell them the work's done and I hand them the tax return and I say it's okay you can just pay me in the next 30 days that'd be fine okay I need to record that transaction well there was no cash on that transaction I finished the work so I earned it so I need to record the revenues from that and I like to do the easy part first now to me I did the work the easy part would be the revenues we know from the rules of debits and credits that revenues increase with a credit. So I'm going to show that increase of $1,200 on the right side. Let me format this. In fact, what I might, well, I'll format it as I go. That's my credit side of the transaction, but I have to have a debit side. And the debit side would go to accounts receivable. So I'll put $1,200 there. I'll format that as well. Now, my transaction is done. I've debited accounts receivable for $1,200. I've credited revenues for $1,200. So as a result of this transaction, we're in balance. The debits equal the credits. I've recorded the revenues of $1,200. And I've recorded the asset accounts receivable. Now accounts receivable is the account we use to show how much money is owed to us by our customers for work we've already done but we're just waiting to collect it. Okay? So that's one transaction. Well, let's go through another. Let's assume that to grow my accounting practice, I take a loan out from the bank and I take, I don't know, $6,000 out. So the bank gives me a loan, which means I get $6,000. And I'm going to put this on the second row, the first transaction we had on row three. And I'm going to show cash increasing by $6,000.
Now, where's my offset? Remember that my debits always have to equal my credits. Well, when I get money from the bank, they've given me a loan, and I have to sign a note payable. A note payable is a formal legal document that says I've received funds and I agree to pay it back. Notes payable is a liability. This is money I owe to somebody else. Therefore, it increases with a credit. So I put $6,000 there, and we've correctly recorded this transaction. And you see that the debits equal the credits. Remember, cash is an asset account. It increases with a debit, so is accounts receivable. That's an asset account. It increases with a debit. Both notes payable and revenue are, are either a liability or an equity account. A note payable is the liability account. The revenue uh, is the equity account, right? It's one of the components of equity. The notes payable is the liability. The revenue is the equity. Both increase with credits, so we're in balance. Now, let's assume the next day I pay back the loan, and let's ignore any interest. Let's assume I paid it back so fast that there was no interest that the bank uh, wanted. And let's assume I only paid back oh, I don't know, $2,000 of it. We're just doing this to show the effects of debits and credits. Well, now what we do, we're going to have a decrease in what we owe. So I'm going to debit notes payable for 2000 But in order to pay it back, I had to actually give them the cash. Cash will decrease by 2000 Okay, I'll format that for you. and you can see that I'm in balance. Okay, well so far we've had three transactions. Our debits always equal their credits. If we actually wanted to sum up the debits and credits, you'll see that the accounting equation is still in balance. But before we do that, let's work through another transaction. Let's assume now that um, I've completed the tax return, I get paid. But just so we don't confuse the dollar values, let's assume I only get paid for half of the transaction. Okay, so our customer is going to pay us for just half of the tax return. So we had made the sale for $1,200. We said they owed us $1,200. We're going to get paid $600. So our next transaction would be an increase or a debit of $600. We increase cash with a debit. We, our debits have to equal our credits. And we credit accounts receivable because now the customer only owes us $600 left. Now, just to reiterate that debit means left and credit means right, let me put these two descriptions up here for debits and credits. All right, there's our debits and credits up there on the left and right of each side of each account. Sort of underline it so you can see it. You know, we probably ought to make it look a little bit different just so it doesn't get in the way of what we're focused on. All right, let's do one more transaction. Let's assume we have a sale for cash. And let's assume, um, and what I mean by a sale from cash is we do another tax return. So we have revenues. And this time, we it's a simpler return. It's $500, and our client pays us immediately. So we will show the 500 cash we collect as another increase and another $500, if I can type the right amount, $500 credit to revenues. Okay, and when we're done, we can figure out what our balances are. Now we would expect cash to have a debit balance. So our balance is cash, all those debits, minus the credit we had. So our balance is 510. I'll just do an underline here. Accounts receivable 
Again, as an asset account, I would expect it to have a debit balance. And sure enough, $1,200 less than $600. And I'll just draw a line here to show. Actually, instead of doing this, I'll, I'll draw a line like here to show that we're, putting, we're calculating the balance on the account now. And that's $600. Under notes payable, I would expect it to have a credit balance since that's a liability account. Well, the credits were six thousand. Two thousand of the note was paid back. Again, I'll I'll just uh, draw two lines here. I've got a four thousand balance. My revenues, I had. I did two tax returns, so if I sum that. I get 1700 Well, let's see if our assets equal our liabilities. Um, excuse me. Let's make sure our assets equal our liabilities plus equity. And let's also make sure our debits equal our credits. OK? Total debits. Now the total debit, actually, the way I want to do this is say total debit balances. Equal 510 plus 600. Now it should balance. I'm going to say total credit balance because every transaction had an equal debit and credit. And we'll put it over here, let's say. Show it as a credit over here. So you can see this helps prove that we our debits always equaled our credits. How about the accounting equation? The accounting equation would say assets would equal liabilities plus owner's equity. Our total assets, I'll put it over here, is equal to 510. That's 5,100 plus 600 of accounts receivable. And then I'll put our total liabilities and equity here. And that's equal to the 4,000 plus the 1,700. And you see we're in balance. OK? So here we've, we've completed our, our brief look at debits and credits. And let's go through the details of them again. We start off with the accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. That's the basic accounting equation. The expanded accounting equation is assets equal liabilities plus new contributions of owner's equity, less distributions plus revenues minus expenses. Debits mean left, credit means right, and the rules of assets, liabilities, and equity are that assets increase with debits, they decrease with credits, and the normal balance is the one that, in, that, that always has the increase side, right? Liabilities and equity go the opposite way. They increase with credits and decrease with debits. Okay, we can break equity down into revenues. They increase with credits, decrease with debits. The expenses go the opposite way. They increase with debits and decrease with credits. Distributions increase with debits and decrease with credits. And new contributions act the same way as revenues, where they increase with a credit and decrease with, a re with uh, the debit. Now, if it's easier to memorize it in this format, then, then pause the presentation and take a look at that presentation so that you can see debits, in, debits are on the left, they increase, credits are on the right, and they decrease. Okay, I hope you found this beneficial to your understanding of debits and credits.